right hello everyone uh, good afternoon so this is vishnu balraj from uh, micron i am part of the product management team so it's going to be exciting today we'll talk about uh, how to enhance ai and uh, database performance using cxl devices it was because so of your new label i didn't, I didn't yeah this is a new uh, micron label yeah uh, so um, so we'll see how to specifically the focus is going to be on the cmms cxl memory modules is what we're going to talk about uh, so let's look at the high level data center challenges what we have today and uh, you know most of you know about the the memory and storage hierarchy so i'll just call out so that you have a context of it and following that uh, so micron has two cmm products so one is cz120 uh, that we have already released and it's in production so the other one is cz122 uh, we'll talk about it and then uh, the exciting part of this presentation is going to be uh, we'll talk about the use cases uh, and we have some demo booth also outside um, so we have internally vetted it and uh, it's been kind of be working with many partners on this so we'll talk about it and then finally how to enable cxl in your company so those are the topics so just to touch upon the data center challenges um, so in memory database uh, sas and then you know ai specifically rag right we'll talk about the rag so we'll be curious about how cxl plays in ai so i'll be emphasizing on uh, usage model on specifically on the retrieval augmented generation so these things requires uh, more capacity uh, so this is one of the major challenge actually uh, as the compute grows the memory capacity also grows the database requires a lot more capacity that's one of the challenge and the second one is um, so you know that last week uh, amd released uh, turin uh, processor so the core count is tops at 196 cores so these compute requires more bandwidth and uh, how do you uh, you know address the bandwidth of the of the additional compute need and uh, in the same time you know these workloads require uh, to be optimized for the tco they demand higher bandwidth and capacity uh, so how do you ensure that you know we optimize the tco using cxl actually you know how, how can we overcome these challenges using cxl so if you look at it uh, this is the memory storage uh, you know hierarchy uh, storage hierarchy uh, all of you know about it so uh, as you go up towards you know the hbm you're going to get lots of uh, bandwidth and as you go down uh, there's going to be an increase in latency and uh, increase in capacity also so cxl sits uh, kind of in the sweet spot actually where you can get the the best uh, capacity expansion and then the bandwidth expansion uh, so we'll see how uh, how to achieve that so the first one here uh, so cz 120 so this is a uh, the product uh, this is in production now so this is a cmm uh, e3.s 2t form factor it's a cmm module you can plug in uh, later on i'll show that we have worked with uh, smc so it can be plugged in on a server um, so we are offering uh, 128 and uh, 256 gb capacity and this is based on uh, cxl 2.0 uh, specification uh, so we are offering uh, the industry leading low latency and uh, high memory bandwidth uh, we top at uh, 37 gb per second and this is again on the cmm category uh, with a pca gen 5 uh, by 8 by 8 lanes is what you're talking about and the way we measured this was through mlc uh, benchmark to read one write so this is where most of the workloads require 70 30 um, and we are able to demonstrate that uh, so this is a standard uh, e3.s 2t form factor so this is already in production uh, so you'll, you'll be able to get it um, it's already uh, launched and in production so the second product what we have here is uh, the cz122 so this is qs is already done and we are sampling it uh, so this product uh, will be available soon so the difference between the cz120 and 122 is that uh, this one has uh, hetero uh, hetero interleaving support as well as metadata support um, so some major platform vendors require metadata with metadata you can do the the hetero interleaving um, so, so a lot of them talked about the hetero interleaving, hetero heterogeneous interleaving earlier. So what you're talking about is hardware-based heterogeneous interleaving. So with the CZ122, we'll be able to enable the hardware-based hetero interleaving for all major CPU platform. From the usage model standpoint, what does it give? So you can just plug in and then you can get both capacity and bandwidth expansion without any software-based tiering or anything that software-based tiering can still be done. but you can get both bandwidth and capacity just out of the box. And that's the, the main advantage of CZ122. And uh, in addition to that, we have the, the RAS capability, what I've talked about here. 
so in terms of RAS, you know, uh, we can talk about our for the features that we are supporting on RAS for CZ122. I'll just call out a couple of them. So one is uh, the internal CVME threshold that we support. So where you can program your memory threshold and uh, once you hit the number of memory errors, it automatically sends a notification back to the OS for doing the page offlining. And this is more of a um, uh, you know OS feature, and then you know we built it in the device to make sure that you know it seamlessly works with that. And the second one is the device initiated PPR HPPR. So when the device boots, uh, so we'll enable the hardware-based PPR, right? So it'll fix the if there are any memory errors. So those are the two features we are offering uh, in CZ122 actually. So that that is in QS done, and you know it'll be p uh, in production soon. So we'll keep you posted on that. All right, so this one got a little messed up here. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the scale up with CXL. Uh, so I do have the picture here. Uh, this is something that we have collaborated with uh, AMD and uh, SMC Supermicro. Uh, so what we have done here is, uh, so if you take a baseline uh, today with um, 120 GB RDMs, uh, so you can only run certain number of VMs. So by being able to add additional CXL modules, you can run more number of VMs, right? So that's that's what we are trying to demonstrate. As the number of cores increases, you can get utilization of a processor by adding CXL because some of these database workloads require more uh, memory. Right? Apologies for this uh, blank here. Actually, need to check. And uh, so the second one here we are talking about is RocksDB uh, performance. So uh, this one we have worked with H3 platform on this one. So we are introducing a concept called uh, FAMFS. So this one, um, I think it's probably uh, CXL 2.0 is the first time we are enabling the sharing model uh, with, uh, you know, with the CXL. So I'm going to show how we can use FAMFS to enhance sharing uh, using the CXL and improve the overall system performance. And the third one is the, the RAG, actually. Uh, so this is the, everyone knows about RAG, actually. So RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Uh, so via CXL, you can improve the overall time to first token, as well as uh, you can also improve the overall latency of a RAG plus LLM system, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about later. And this is something that we're working with the Memerge on this one. So the first use case, let's look at this, right? So in this, if you look at it, um, uh, so the VMs are running so in a direct attach mode, right? So this is the this is the baseline what you're talking about here. So we're able to run so using TPCH. As, uh, as a benchmark, we're able to fire up um, you know, around 45 cores or so. So each of the TPCH requires around 34 GB or so. And uh, we had, on the direct attach, we had about, uh, it's a 12 channel, so 120 GB and 1.5 terabyte total. So, uh, so immediately it kind of ran out of it because the number of cores are so high and it needed more memory to have good enough performance. And so um, the, the DRAM is, uh, is called out as a NUMA 0, so it's the, the baseline, and then the CXL is in a NUMA 1. So what happens, right, if you look at the, on the right-hand side, the graph here, uh, so with the DRAM, you are able to do the scale-up factor up to 1, let's say, you know, so many VMs are fired up, and it's all running. So using CXL, you are able to increase the ORR utilization, the memory utilization, up to 70%. Right, with the CXL plus DRAM, so what you have 1.7x is what you're able to improve it. But now one can ask, so what happens to uh, the overall performance uh, because the CXL is a low latency? But what we have seen in this benchmark is uh, the, the purple line you're seeing here, uh, the, 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 sorry, the gray line you're seeing here is the, with the DRAM, and uh, this purple line is with uh, CXL, when CXL is added. So if you look at the overall performance, when you added that additional VMs, right, up to 70%, your average performance is only uh, gone down by only 6%. So CXL latency has not impacted the performance, and overall bandwidth kind of counts in this. Only certain bandwidth counts, and CXL is able to, uh, you know, uh, provide that. So that's the point number one. We are able to increase the up to 70%. And the second point is I want to bring up is, you know, so this is a scale up, actually. So what can one do, you know, if they want to run more number of VMs um, and each of the VMs, if they want to run database uh, or, you know, data-centric workloads, they can either add a new system or they can scale up using CXL. So in this model, so with the current price point, we are able to, by increasing, by, by increasing the, the CXL, uh, we added up to uh, one terabyte of capacity, 256 GB. 
by being able to add it, your price performance per dollar, right, goes up by 1.2x. If you assume the baseline server is a one. So you can push the CXL by uh, adding more CXL, you will be able to push it up. In some servers, you can add up to eight CXL devices. So you get more memory and you get more performance. And that's one way to scale up the performance without adding a new server. Okay, so this is one usage model. And uh, so this talks about you know, what uh, server we used here. So if you look at it you know, on, the, on, the, on the bottom uh, here, uh, you see this is the Supermicro H13 petascale storage server. So it has got the CXL slots in the front. Um, you can put up to four uh, CXL slots. This is the storage server. So this is where the evaluation was done. Um, yeah. And uh, so I'll go to the next one. <coughs> so if this is a ROX DB. Um, so if you if you look at the left hand uh, left hand side, right? So this is how the traditionally uh, the ROX DB is been run. So uh, you have a storage. So where you are putting the database, and now you have these two VMs running on it. The same database is being read by the RocksDB application. What happens is, in this case, the, the VM1 and VM2 are having, this is a local, local attached, DRAM. So they're having duplicate copies of the same database. So, so this is the traditionally how it was done, and uh, this is a DRAM-only system. And in this system, we have CXL. So in this DRAM is there, but DRAM is not used. Uh, not used in the sense I'll explain it. Uh, so what we are doing is, we, uh, th this is a, we are, uh, Micron is introducing a concept called FAMFS. So FAMFS stands for uh, Fabric Attached Memory File System. So the idea is, you know, your uh, DAX concept, right? DAX concept, uh, direct access to the memory. So the application can directly access to the memory. Taking the DAX concept and then file sharing, both are merged into something called FAMFS. So that way, each of these applications can, the entire database is loaded on CZ, uh, CXL modules. It makes one total of one terabyte here. And uh, each of these um, databases, right, this is again read-only. It's not a read-write, it's a read-only. So they're able to avail this directly without going and buffering in the, uh, in the local DRAM. So with that, right, you're able to get much better performance, actually, when the databases are large. And then the other important point on this, there is, there is no, uh, this is deduplication done. Uh, you know, so by that also you are able to save. And this we have demonstrated with 4CXL, 4CXL E3.S in a server. So one can also enable this with multiple uh, uh, nodes where you can have a switch and you can have the CXL 2.0 devices up to 5.5 terabyte and then you can, you can share it in the multiple nodes. So that's, a, that's another uh, huge advantage. So I'm going to show you the, the benchmarks that we have done, right? So this FAMFS is something that Micron has taken the leadership on. And, uh, you know, we have pushed the patches in the kernel. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, our engineers are working on it. And in, in about, you know, I cannot tell the exact timeline, but in the future, you know, we will have a kernel available with the FAMFS for all the customers, our customers can use this. So here I will show you the, the, the results of the benchmark that we have done. So on the top, you see, uh, this is the operation per second, this is the overall performance that we are looking at. So the, the orange line that you are looking at, that's the DRAM plus SSD, right? So the x-axis here is uh, the DB size divided by DRAM size. So what we have done is we have taken the uh, DB size and uh, database size, and we have increased it with the first system. So the performance is really good. The ops per second is really good. And then what happens suddenly, you know, the, it goes for a toss when the database size goes beyond the uh, uh, beyond the DRAM size because your DRAM size is small enough because you are duplicating it as used as a cache, and then it goes to the storage. So you know it, it it really lowers. But what we have found interesting is the blue line you are seeing is two CXL cards and the performance is low, and the the yellow line that you are looking at is the FAMFS with four CXL card. The FAMFS with four CXL card performance is equivalent to what you have in DRAM in terms of the operation per second. And since it's all sit in a single uh, CXL uh, shared memory, you can increase the DRAM size and you know, you're able to get the same performance, you know, sustained performance over the period of time, right? And, uh, and here again, uh, in this case, um, you know, there's a P99 latency. By the way, this is a logarithmic graph. So initially, um, DRAM latencies are better uh, in the first few um, uh, database, uh, when the database size is really low because uh, you know, DRAM is faster. 
but as it goes along when, the, when you increase the database size, again this logarithmic scale, right, this P99 latency goes for a toss for a DRAM, but your CXL is exactly consistent. So this is the best part where you're not actually doing a buffer copy also. So therefore, everything is sitting on CXL and many different DBs, uh, rocks DB applications is able to use it. This does not require any changes to be done on the rocks DB also, so it can be just working. And there is also uh, deduplication uh, saves overall system power. We haven't quantified that, but uh, there are a lot of benefits and uh, you know, this is possible today, right? Um, with, uh, with the direct attach as well as with the multiple nodes. So here we have, uh, we have collaborated with H3 platform. And uh, so like what I said is, it's a one terabyte total. And this one goes up to 5.5 terabyte overall. You can take 256 GB and you can attach to, with a switch you can attach to many nodes and many nodes can use the same same database. And so this is the, the last but not least, actually I'm going to talk about this usage model here. <coughs> so um, so RAG stands for Retrieval Augment, Augmented Generation. So this is becoming more prevalent in enterprises. So the idea here is, you know, with LLM being trained sometime, you know, like last year or last couple of years ago, everyone wants to always have the latest and greatest data, right? So RAG is useful on that one scenario. The second one RAG is being used is enterprises have their own data sets and they want to take the data set and put it in a RAG system and they want to take, do a similarity search and add additional context. And the additional context is given to this uh, LLM and LLM is able to take it and then it's able to uh, generate the, the, the new answers. Uh, so this LLM is running on, let's assume this is running on a GPU, right? So what we are talking about here is how can CXL help with the RAG pipeline. Because overall, the performance of this is going to be measured by uh, TTFT, right? That's one of the performance metrics that is being measured, which stands for total time taken for the first token. And the second one is the total latency. So if your lag, RAG latency increases, your TTFT and the overall latency is going to increase. So it's important to optimize this RAG. So that's the point one. So now this RAG is today being run on CPUs. The reason is it's not compute intensive. So with that, right, with the CPU, we already have CXL. And uh, like whatever the challenges that I said earlier, RAG requires uh, large databases because we are talking about vector database here. So we are taking the existing data set and converting into embeddings and then indexes. It kind of blows up in the size. So we have seen, uh, you know, some of our internal analysis indicate, you know, that this size could be going up to six terabytes or eight terabytes. So these are all sitting in the storage. The more you push it into the CXL, it's going to have better performance. And so that's how what you do is, you know, you're able to reduce this overall latency on this uh, overall, when the user query gives with the retrieval search, this, this is going to add latency. So when you add more latency to that, the user gets impatient, right? So, so this is where, you know, we, we, are, we are looking at adding CXL and improving the overall performance, AA performance. And then this part of it, you know, it's still on HPM and, um, uh, you know, we will, we will look at it in, in, the, in, the, in the overall GPU, right? But this, this rack part is what we are talking about here. So, uh, again, this one, we, we, ha we haven't quantified the exact results of, you know, how, ex how much it improves. So, we are planning to put together the data, we are working on it, uh, and hopefully by supercompute we'll be able to share some results. But this is another real strong use case where we think uh, the C our CZ122 micron modules uh, will be able to improve the AA inference latency and uh, the response time while using RAG. All right, so, okay, so now actually, uh, on the, this is more of a call to action. Um, so if you're further interested in, uh, uh, you know, Micron CXL devices, CZ122, um, so we have a website, you know, in a, uh, you know, micron.com slash CXL, and we have a program called uh, TEP program, uh, Technology Enablement Program. So we would su suggest you to sign up for that and uh, we'll get you the support, and uh, we'll be able to get you the, the collaterals and the data sheets and all that good stuff, and we'll work with you uh, to enable CXL in your company. So that's all I have, actually. Uh, almost 20, 20 minutes, any, any questions? Can I take any questions? Unfortunately, no, no because no, okay. they're, yeah, right. they're, they're running us out of here. So okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Vishnu, and also thank you for uh, being co-sponsoring this event.